government in fact encouraged governors not to be passive spectators and and the governor uh, governors made public statements to the effect oh, we're not going to be passive spectators the karia commission itself says that governors should not be political appointees right. uh, i'm not a member of the rss but it's my misfortune that i am not keep talking about how governors function under our constitution if you look at the history of governors you will find that in 1858 the crown directly appointed governors as agents of the crown with well, that phase continued for a long long time till we came to the 1935 act when the governors functioned under a certain scheme of things which were which is part of the 1935 act well when we became independent and the functioning of the office of, of the governor was controlled by the provisions of the constitution this phase continued and governors by and large since india became a republic from 1950 functioned within those constraints but then came the phase of 2014 onwards when i believe and this is my opinion people may not agree with it that the old rule of the center directly uh, asking the governor to do this and that in my opinion today governors are in fact the agents of the union government sitting here so we want to discuss a lot of these things how governments has functioned over the years since 2014 uh, has the constitution and the concept of federal or the federal structure of this country is has that been damaged in a, in some sense well that's uh, not a very good question <laughs> in the sense that with the passage of time different people have been appointed governors of different states well governors in general to the extent that i can speak about confidently uh when i joined service and much later when i was dealing with matters which involved the role of the governor in those days uh, the raj bhavan or the government house as we used to call it were occupied by persons who were not associated with politics the large majority of them with a single party rule at the center and the states uh, led to uh, new formations coalition governments yes yeah. then we saw the evolution the beginning of uh, a confrontationist relationship between the union and the states mm-hmm. and at about that time i i i if i am correct in my memory the kind of persons who were uh, nominated appointed as governors uh, were uh, particularly chosen for their political orientation or their reliability to carry out the behest of the center yes and execute certain approaches or policies in the state to which they were appointed mm-hmm. so that led to if i may use the word politicization of the role of the governor yeah. the problem is recently there was a governors conference as you know in 2024 recently july sometime or in fact later and uh, there the the government in fact encouraged governors not to be passive spectators and and the governor uh, governors made public statements to the effect oh, we're not going to be passive spectators now that's why i posed the question earlier the role of the governor seems to have changed from totally, being totally yes totally. from being within the were functioning within the framework of the constitution and now functioning outside that framework by being yeah, agents yeah, yeah. of the government that you say okay. yes you see i think uh, you know we have to recognize constitutional morality right the constitution expects constitutional authorities including governors of course yes to act in a manner that is constitutional yes all right so if you are passive or active it doesn't matter right as long as you are within the constitution correct you know so i think constitutional morality still plays a very important role and uh, dr ambedkar had emphasized that so uh, but you know what's happening is that the functions of the governor now are becoming dysfunctional so to speak all right so they are going beyond the constitutional uh, limits they're crossing the red line so to speak or the lakshman rekha 
and that is worrying. Institution of the governor, and you mentioned Ambedkar and the debates in the Constituent Assembly. One of the debates was, should a governor be elected or nominated? One of the central parts of that, uh, that discussion. And Ambedkar said the following. He said, if the Constitution remains in principle the same as we intend that it should be, that the governor should be a purely constitutional governor with not, with not the power of interference in the administration of the province, then it seems to me quite immaterial whether he is nominated or elected, right? And as you said, sir, that the Sarkaria Commission itself says that governors should not be political appointees. They should be men of eminence and of substance. So actually, we've thrown that, that moral concept out into the dustbin. Right? And we are left with these people, each of whom has a political agenda. You have a governor saying, I will not administer oath of office to you. Yes. You have a governor who sanctions prosecutions right? by holding an inquiry himself recently in Karnataka. You had a governor who has sacked a minister. Who has sacked a minister. You have gov governors who refuse to sign bills passed by the legislature, sometimes right. unanimously passed by the legislature. Yes. So why is it, sir, that the nation is not talking about how this federal structure is being demolished and how we are now moving away from the very concept and the basis of our constitution? Why is nobody talking about it? And what, is the, what do you think should be done? You know, one of my concerns for many years, <coughs> particularly uh, arises from the fact that I've served in the uh, national security management arena for many years. Uh, if we uh, look at the role of governors, even from the very limited perspective of center state understanding in the theater in this arena of national security, then I dare say that uh, uh, the governor can play a very important role as a bridge between the union and the state. He made a statement saying that uh, I'm not a member of the RSS, but it's my misfortune that I am not. You see? And I would, it's perhaps the most nationalized organization in the world, and I would love to be a member of the RSS. Now, when a governor makes such a statement, when the vice president of India He's the vice president of India. What message does it send to constitutional authorities around the country? Yeah, I think it's a very uh, depressing message, but I'll actually go one step even further. I'd say that what we are seeing now in terms of the way governors act is a reversion to the era of the British Crown or even earlier the East India Company. They were intended to be agents of the regime in whatever that regime was, whether it was the crown or, or a corporate entity, and intended to ensure that things didn't happen outside of the regime's interest. And that the governor should be a bridge between the state and the center, bridge in the sense yeah. that wherever there needs to be a dialogue, the governor should help yes, in that he should, dialogue. Uh, promote that. And promote that. Because as uh, Judge Shah would uh, agree that essentially governors, uh, governors have no particular role. This question of discretion, in my opinion, uh, or choice or discretion is uh, zero. Mm -hmm. If you take decisions which they call in your discretion, which are based on rationality, on, on uh, good foundation, mm 